Hello everyone. Today we'll be covering what bit to use for what job. We will be using Sane Smart Bits as an example because they are an affordable and quality option for beginners and experienced machinists alike. They are coated in nano blue made of hard steel which has high hardness, strength, and res wear resistance. This makes your job easier um, as a machinist because you have to worry less about broken bits and dull bits. These bits are about $1.37 a piece if you buy the luxury set, which is $109.99. That's 80 bits. Um, you can buy them individually. That's eight different styles, and you have 10 of them per um, a box. First off, we'll be covering the rough edge ones, which are different than a straight cut, but they're used for pretty much the same purpose. Um, the larger cross section than a straight cut bits, um, due to how their geometry is, makes them overall a little bit stronger. However, straight cut is still um, better in some situations. It, I personally prefer the rough cuts because they do a better job of not having strings on the edge of the wood and giving a nice smooth finish. Um, they, which is interesting because it's a rough bit. There's two different styles for the rough cut ones, and that is the you have two different boxes. One has 0 0.8, 1 mil, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, 2, 2.2, 2.4, and 3 millimeter bits with the 3.175 millimeter shank. That is um, the part that you insert into the spindle, and that is one eighth of an inch in diameter. Then they have another option, which is 1.5 millimeter, 1 1.6, 1.7, 1 1.8, 2, 2.2, 2.4, 2.5, 3, 3.175. This does good for wood, specifically plywoods, because it does not pull up, which will cause delamination in the plywood, and you just won't end up with a nice cut. Um, and it's good for hardwood, the two, and essentially it'll do any wood and other materials that will splinter well. So you could cut particle board with this pretty easy. However, I would not advise doing that with an upcut bit because you'll end up with a very rough surface on top due to splintering. It's okay for plastic but not ideal because it cannot pull the material up and out as easy as an upcut style bit um, and over time if you're cutting fast enough that will get uh, the bit will get hot enough to actually make the plastic gunk up. I've had this happen to me before um, which does not makes it even more of a problem because you have more particles entering and you just get this blob on it which can halt a cutting operation. You can do linoleum and corin on it however I would not recommend doing aluminum mainly because the chips are really small and the larger that you when cutting aluminum you want a larger chip in order to um, clear out more material at once. Also the larger chips will um, carry off more heat with them than a smaller chip would which allows for cooling of the material and also the bit. So your, if you cut aluminum with this your bit and your um, material will both get hotter. You can do it with some lubrication. I would just not advise it. Also, it does not clear the chips out of the way, and you want to get those chips out of the way with that. Next up, we will be doing the covering the single flute upcut. Um, this makes larger chips than a two flute or three flute. However, it is with wood and stuff like that, it's going to cause major splintering due to the larger size. It will just catch and not give you the nicest quality finish on your wood piece. However, for plastics, especially dense ones, it will work great and you can use PVC, HDPE, polypropylene, polycarbonate, 
you name it, you can throw it at this bit and it'll be good for the plastics, especially the denser ones. This one does work with linoleum and um, corian again, and this one will actually work for aluminum. However, it's a balance of getting your feed rates and speeds at the correct um, amount because you're going to be getting larger parts out of this. So it's good for cooling, but if you go too fast, you might bite off a little bit more than you can chew, which can cause issues. But for dense plastics or even less dense plastics, this works fine. For less dense plastics, it would be best to have more flutes though, which is the next bit, a two flute upcut flat nose. It makes smaller chips than the single flute bit, which is good for materials that are harder and more dense and don't want to make larger chips. So think of a piece of steel. You're going to try and take a large chunk out of that. You're just going to get caught. So essentially, you would use it for a stale cookie instead of a soft cookie because the stale cookie you have to take a bunch of small bites out of, where if, if you have a fresh out of the oven cookie, you'll take a big bite out of it because it's soft. Um, it does do good on soft materials too. Um, overall, this is a great bit for most projects. It does good on hardwoods, but not plywoods um, or particle boards or other things like that. It does great on plastics of all densities and also still works on linoleum and coronian, um, corin, I mean, and aluminum. This one also works good for too. This is the one I personally prefer when cutting aluminum due to the chip size. It allows me to have a higher speed. You can't go crazy fast on any of these machines though. And overall, it's just more reliable in my opinion whenever it comes to that. However, I have cut aluminum with a single flute and a um, double flute. I've also done straight cut before. I would not advise the straight cut Next up, we have the two flute upcut ball nose one. This is used for finishing, smoothing, and 3D carving, which is usually done as secondary to a rough cut, which would be done with bits I mentioned before that are flat, like the single flute or the double flute, because they leave a nice flat bottom. It makes smaller um, it makes smaller chips than um, single flute bits. Again, it's essentially um, just the one I mentioned before, the other two flute, just a rounded end on the bottom, which is good for materials that are harder and don't want to make larger chips. Again, um, it actually works decent on wood, but you don't want to, you could do plywood with it, I just would not advise it. Due to its geometry, it's not pulling up as much with the tip, so it can do plywood slightly better but it's not gonna leave a smooth bottom and I would still advise to using the rough or straight bit. Um, plastics, it works great, works great on linoleum, um, corian and aluminum. I'm going to be doing a large project with aluminum and this one soon. And ideally you'll use this for 3D carving and that is basically what's made for. Next up we have the V-Bit straight cut which comes in three different angles, a 15 degree, a 20 degree, and a 30 degree, which is great for very detailed work, small 3D carving, chamfering edges. Um, the point at the end is brittle and sharp, so you need to be careful with it, but it's, it's not gonna break easily on you unless you run it hard into an object while it's not spinning or you're moving it too fast. But then again, you have 10 of these, so you can figure it out and those are more affordable. I believe it's $14 for 10 of those. And again, they have the blue coating. Um, it does work good on wood. It's okay on plastic again. I've used it on plastic before. It just gunks it up. Um, it's great for though, if you want to do um, engraving, definitely use a V-bit. And linoleum and coronian again would work. Aluminum doesn't work great. It's not ideal, but you can chamfer edges with it. And the all these bits you're able to get together or by separate. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed and this helped you out.